full of different types of cells that can be present. Some other materials that can be present, once again, they don't have to be present in all of these matrices. <clears throat> the matrix will have what's known as a ground substance. We can have something called hyaluronic acid. Good example. In our eyes behind the lens, we are born with a vitreous humor. It actually looks like a gel. It acts as a very good lubricant. Um, another place that we could find this hyaluronic acid, cartilage. Proteoglycans. Let's break that term down. Proteo, protein, glycan, sugar. All right. Now, the cool thing about these, okay, is the structure they create. And we'll look at that. It actually looks like a test tube brush or a bottle brush. Okay? It's really cool. Then we can have adhesive molecules that help to hold those proteoglycans together. For example, the ones that exist in cartilage, the adhesive molecule that helps hold them together is chondronectin. In bone, osteonectin, and in fibrous tissue, fibronectin. Note, they're found in my semi-rigid connective tissue and rigid connective tissue. Because their goal, trap water. Meaning, help with nutrients. So they're important in my semi-rigid and rigid connective tissue. This would be what these fibers can look like in the body. Note, collagen looks like a very rigid tube. Okay? That is going to become important to us as we continue to move forward in systems. Our elastic fibers, they are going to be found like in areas of the body that I mentioned. The reticular fibers, even though this is showing recoiled elastic, reticular is going to create a shape like that similar, okay, where it's going to look like a web. These are my proteoglycans that I find in my cartilage and my bone. Because cartilage and bone, you have to move. Now, when I say move, I mean move for materials to reach those areas and bring in nutrients and get rid of the waste. All right, it's real interesting. Trust me on that. All right, let's see what this little video is going to tell us. include structural support, binding structures together, fat storage, exchange of nutrients and metabolic waste, and defense and protection. 
All connective tissue share three basic components, cells, protein fibers, and ground substance. Together, the protein fibers and ground substance form the extracellular matrix. The proportions of these components, in addition to different cells and protein fibers, help define the various categories of connective tissue. In the adult, connective tissue can be divided into three broad categories. Connective tissue proper, supporting connective tissue, and fluid connective tissue. There are two basic subcategories of connective tissue proper, loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. Loose connective tissue has abundant ground substance with scattered cells and loosely arranged protein fibers. By comparison, dense connective tissue has abundant, tightly packed fibers, but relatively few cells and little ground substance. Loose connective tissue can be subdivided into areolar, adipose, and reticular connective tissue. Areolar connective tissue is found in the subcutaneous layer and around organs. It has a gel-like ground substance, numerous blood vessels, and scattered cells known as fibroblasts. Adipose connective tissue is found in subcutaneous tissue and around some organs. It is composed of closely packed adipocytes or fat cells. Reticular connective tissue forms the stroma, a connective tissue framework of lymph nodes, the spleen, the thymus, and bone marrow. It is composed of a network of branched collagen fibers, known as reticular fibers, with scattered fibroblasts and leukocytes, or white blood cells, embedded in a gel-like ground substance. Dense connective tissue can be subdivided into dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic connective tissue. Dense regular connective tissue forms tendons and most ligaments. It is composed of densely packed parallel <coughs> collagen fibers with fibroblasts between the layers. There is little ground substance. Dense, irregular connective tissue is found in the dermis, periosteum, and perichondrium, and the capsule of organs. This type of connective tissue is composed predominantly of randomly arranged collagen fibers with fibroblasts interspersed. There is more ground substance than found in dense, regular connective tissue. Elastic tissue is found in the walls of elastic arteries the trachea and bronchi, and the vocal cords. This type of connective tissue is composed predominantly of branching elastic fibers, with fibroblasts in some spaces between the fibers. Elastic fibers, formed by the protein elastin, stretch under tension and then return to their original shape when tension is released. Supporting connective tissue can be subdivided into cartilage and bone. Cartilage has a semi-solid extracellular matrix that allows flexibility, whereas the solid matrix of bone is more rigid and provides greater support. There are three types of cartilage, hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage. Hyaline cartilage is the most common type. It is found on the articular surfaces of synovial joints. It also forms the cartilage of the larynx, trachea, and nose. Chondrocytes, or mature cartilage cells, are found within small spaces called lacunae that are scattered irregularly in the extracellular matrix. Collagen fibrils are present within the matrix, but not visible in the light microscope. A perichondrium, a dense irregular connective tissue sheath, overlies most cartilage. Elastic cartilage is found in the external ear and in the epiglottis. It contains abundant elastic fibers, which form a web-like mesh around lacunae that contain chondrocytes. Like hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage usually has a perichondrium. 
Fibrocartilage is found in intervertebral discs, the pubic synthesis, and the menisci of the knee joint. It contains numerous irregular bundles of collagen fibers. The sparse ground substance contains chondrocytes within lacunae that are frequently arranged in parallel rows. Unlike hyaline and elastic cartilage, fibrocartilage does not have a perichondrium. There are two forms of bone or osseous connective tissue, compact bone and spongy bone. Compact bone usually forms the hard outer shell of bones. Concentric rings of bone, called lamellae, form cylindrical structures known as osteons. Each osteon has a central canal that connects to a network of tiny branching passageways called canaliculi. The central canal and canaliculi contain blood vessels. Osteocytes, or mature bone cells, occupy lacunae, small spaces, between neighboring lamellae. Spongy bone, also known as cancellous bone, usually forms inside of bones. It does not contain osteons. Slender bony plates, called trabeculae, form a bony network. The spaces between trabeculae contain bone marrow and blood vessels. Osteocytes are scattered throughout the trabeculae. The combination of compact and spongy bone allows bones to be both strong and lightweight. Fluid connective tissue is represented by blood. The formed elements of blood, specifically its cells and cell fragments, include erythrocytes, or red blood cells, leukocytes, or white blood cells, and platelets. The watery ground substance of blood contains dissolved protein fibers. All right. So our connective tissue. So connective tissue is diverse, abundant, and why did... There we go. All right, so looking at what were the first two mentioned, which were the mesenchyme and then the mucus, mesenchyme is the source of all adult connective tissue. It forms mostly in the mesoderm, and in embryonic development, this would be our middle germ layer. I won't get too deep into that because you don't really need to know that. Now, one of the things I want you to begin to remember is that we do have these three fibers of the body. The collagen, the reticular, the elastic. So, in mesenchyme, we begin to see development of delicate collagen and the matrix developing. <laughs> now, mucus. One that has remained and the one that we find um, in the body. It's a mucus. Now, note the spelling, okay? Because you will see that as we move forward, we will have mucus linings, but they're going to be M-U-C-O-U-S because it's going to be um, mucus developed by the goblet cells. Do you remember those in the epithelium? Okay, so the one place that has the mucus of embryonic development, and the reason I mentioned this, okay, it's a source of pure stem cells. A lot of times now, when, um, when a lady gives birth, they will ask, do you want to keep the umbilical cord? Do you want to bank it? Is usually how it's referred to. And the reason they ask that is it's the source of pure stem cells for that child. And if something goes wrong, they can go back to this, okay? They can retrieve some of that um, mucus, which is known as Wharton's jelly, all right? And they can try to use it to help the child if they're sick. 
So a lot of people, uh, a lot of parents are choosing to 